All right. Cylindrical coordinates. Cylindrical coordinates are the um, the analog. Of polar coordinates in three dimensions. Um, and we, the, the kind of the everyday way that, that sometimes people say it's um, uh, polar coordinates. With Z. So we're just adding a, 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 a distance off the xy plane to our polar coordinates. So let's draw a picture we how, uh, how we represent our points. So there's our rectangular, um, rectangular coordinate system. And a point out here, we could write uh, x, y, z. And in cylindrical coordinates, we would have our theta z. And what we're doing to get this, I'm, I'm going to move my point down a little bit here. Um, what we're doing is we're projecting out from the z-axis, like so. And we project this directly down into the xy plane, like so. So in the xy plane, this angle is going to be theta. This distance, this is r, this distance is r. And this distance is z. And if we project these to the axes like so, And this along here. This would be y, and this would be x. So r theta is the projection of the point into the xy plane. So everything that's going on in the xy plane is exactly, exactly like we talked about with polar coordinates. We're just figuring out where our point, the projection of our point is in the xy plane, and then we're moving up z units from the xy plane. So that's how we're going to represent our points. Polar coordinates are very useful when we have um, <coughs> circular symmetry about an axis. And when we have that situation, often, usually, they're going to be easier to use than rectangular coordinates. We can use polar, or we can use cylindrical coordinates and avoid tricks up, basically, when we do integration. Um, and on Monday, we'll talk about spherical coordinates, which is nice when we have a, a spherical symmetry about a point. All right, so let's, what we're interested in today is, is basically coordinate conversions and being able to start thinking in terms of a new coordinate system. So our conversions are exactly the same as we talked about with polar coordinates. We just add that z, that z component. So cylindrical Two rectangular um, x 
is r cosine theta, just like before. Y equals r sine theta, our familiar, hopefully familiar conversions, and z equals z. That's an easy conversion. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll go back over. We'll re, we'll talk about that one again. A second. Um, and rectangular to cylindrical. Rectangular to cylindrical, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Um, tangent theta is y over x, and z equals z. So that z z component is a, is an easy conversion. Every it, when we're doing these conversions, everyone should get that one. And we say that in cylindrical coordinates, the, the point zero, zero, zero is the pole. All right, so let's look at a couple of, um, <clears throat> a couple of conversions. What we're going to do is convert a couple of points. And then we're going to talk about converting equations. We want um, r theta z, 3, 3 pi over 2, negative 3, 2 rectangular. All right, do, can, yeah, so we, we, we're going to know that, uh, I'll put this down at the bottom, z equals negative 3. Wow. Whoa. Um, so without doing the convergence, can we see what, what is x going to be? Zero, it's where's three pi over two in the xy plane? On the on the y axis, right? So x is zero on the y axis. So we could do it with that. If we if we if we saw that right away, we could say that. But we know it's th if we do the com com co conversion three pi over two, cosine of three pi over two is zero. Y is three sine. Whoops, I wrote three. Three pi over two. Sine of 3 pi over 2, negative 1, so that's going to be negative 3. So our x, y, z is going to be 0, negative 3, negative 3. Um, let's go the other way. Um, so this time we have x, y, z equals negative 1, 1, 2, 2 cylindrical. So r equals square root of negative 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is 2 square root. And I'm going to say plus or minus, because we can use a we can use a negative radius as long as we keep get our angle correct. So we could say our radius can be positive or negative in cylindrical coordinates. Um, and what quadrant are we in here? In the xy plane, we're in the second quadrant, right? X is negative, y is positive. So we have. Right, so we'd be the second, second octant. So in the xy plane, we want a second, we want a second quadrant angle. So, so when we do our our conversion there, we have to make sure we get a second quadrant angle. So tangent theta is one over negative one, 
which is negative 1. So we need a, an angle in the second quadrant whose tangent is negative 1. 3 pi over 4. Um, all right. And we know that z equals z. So we can say that uh, r theta z is, um, we could choose the positive square root, r uh, square, root of, square root of 2, 3 pi over 4, comma 2. We could also say that that is, for, as another possibility, negative square root of 2. And then where would we put our angle if we had our negative radius? Uh, seven, seven, at 7 seven pi over 4. Nine. So we put it in the fourth quadrant in the xy plane, but our radius is negative. That gets us back to the second quadrant. So that's another example. We could choose an infinite number of theta values. It, this first one's going to be the most common. All right, let's look at some equation conversions. And this also gives us a chance to visualize some surfaces. All right, so. Before we do our conversion, what is this surface? Elliptoloid? Elliptoloid. <laughs> in, in the xz plane, x squared equals 4z squared. So x equals plus or minus 2z. That's a line. Or lines. In the yz plane, y squared equals 4z squared. So y equals plus or minus 2z. Line. So this is a cone. Double napped cone. Um, so easy conversion, right? What's x squared plus y squared? R squared equals 4z squared. That's easy. You could also write, this would be fine for a conversion, r equals plus or minus 2z. I Usually you would see this one. And this would be a cone. The, the 4 is going to affect the slope of the sides of the cone. Um, let's look at a, another one. 2 cylindrical. 4x squared plus 4y squared plus z squared equals 1. And we're going 2 cylindrical. So what, what is this one? In the, in the xy plane, 4x squared plus 4y squared equals 1. That's a circle, so in the xy plane we get a circle. 4x squared plus z squared equals 1. Ellipse. 4y squared plus z squared equals 1. Ellipse. So this is going to be an ellipsoid. Um, so in the xy plane, if we make a little sketch here. We have a circle in the xy plane. And then our major axis here. squared over one half squared. This is z squared over one squared. So the major axis is going to be along the z axis. So it's going to be stretched this direction.
This one wasn't that great. <laughs> and then here's you know, along there. There. There's our, our rough sketch of that ellipsoid. All right, let's convert. What do we want to do here? This is 4R squared. Factor out the 4, that's 4R squared uh, plus Z squared equals 1. Usually you'll write um, uh, Z squared equals something or R squared equals something. So I would s we could write this as R squared equals 1 minus Z squared over 4. You could also write it z squared. There's not. You would most likely see it written like this. I don't think there's, there's not necessarily a, quite a standard. All right, let's go the other direction. We want to go two rectangular. Off the top of your head, anyone anyone know what this thing is? What? So how are we going to convert? We have that cosine two theta. Probably. Probably. What would be a, a, a useful identity to use here? We have a double yeah, angle. A I didn't. It's related to that one, but there's. There's, there's that one, but there's going to be one. Then we'd have a R, an extra R squared in there. Is there a more convenient one? That's the one that we can use to get those other two that we've I've written on the board uh, a number of times. Uh, all right, and then this is nice. R squared cosine squared is x squared. R squared sine squared is y squared. I'm going to write it like that. All right, what is that thing? Hyperboloid of? way to tell. There's one negative sign here. One sheet. Well, th but this is negative one. So I'm going to write this as minus x squared plus y squared minus z squared equals positive one. Two negative signs, two sheets. One negative sign, one sheet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about let's talk about how how we sketch this in the x y plane. We have minus x squared plus y squared equals one. That's a hyperbola. What where is our our axis? X or y? Y is the axis because it's the one that's positive. So if we're going to start a sketch down here. In the XY plane, I'm going to go out here because we get it. Hyperbolas are in two parts. So we get a uh, hyperbola with its axis along the Y. I'll make it a little bigger here. Along the Y axis. And we get one back here as well. 
All right, in the YZ plane. We have y squared minus z squared equals 1. So we have a hyperbola, and the major axis is, or the axis is along the y axis. So we get a hyperbola here and down here. Same thing here, hyperbola here, and then it goes down here. In the xz plane, We have minus x squared minus z squared equals 1. Well, these are both this side, the x squared is positive, z squared is positive, and they're both negative, and that equals a negative number. So there's no, tr no trace. No trace in the xz plane. But if y squared if y squared is greater than 1 we have um, x squared plus y squared equals y squared minus 1 just rearranging this So if y squared is greater than 1, what do we have? Uh, x squared plus y squared equals a constant, right? For a particular value of y squared greater than 1. So what are those? Circles. 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 So we get circles parallel to the... Um, XZ plane. So we're going to connect these these hyperboloids with little circles, like so. So we get kind of two two cup shaped things facing away from each other. What's that? I'm sorry? <laughs> if this were a hyperboloid of one sheet, we'd get a, a, a hyperbola that connects them this way. So quick, easy way to tell the hyperboloids, if you have the, make sure you get it in standard form with just a one on the one side of the equation. Two negative signs, two sheets, one negative sign, one sheet. How is that different from a hyperbolic paraboloid? But how would the equation be different? One of these, one of these has to be the first power to get a, a parabola, right? You'd have to have z equals x squared in, in a plane, or z equals y squared. So you need one in, in one, to, one of those to be the first power to be a hyperbolic parabola. All right, questions? Visualizing these surfaces is really fun. Yeah, fun. All right, homework. Did I tell you, did I tell you about the NPR report? There was a report on NPR that said that to get people to like you, you should ask, ask them questions. Oh. So, so when I'm giving you homework, what I'm trying to do is get you to like me. Oh. <laughs> so I'm asking you questions. Uh. <laughs> it, uh, and it just, it, it never seems to quite work, so I just have to keep trying. And I'm a little bit insecure too, so I'm never quite sure when people say that, that they like me that they actually do. Yeah, that's the bottom line. Every day, 
Multiple questions. 